Okay, this is um, an off-grid approach to making waffles. So as you can see here, I got my waffle maker. And what it does is heat it up and then it spins it like that. So that you can kind of get it cooked evenly on both sides. Uh, this is the old Griswold uh, waffle maker. It's got the wire coils here so it doesn't heat up hot so you can actually grab it without burning yourself. It's still warm. Actually, it's still pretty hot. but you know, you don't want to grab it and hold on to it or otherwise it will start to burn. But doing this is no problem. All right, so what I gotta do is I gotta check the temperature. All right now this side is 287 degrees. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up and it has its own catch here. There we go. As you can see, it's totally standing up independent. It's not even touching the shelf here at all. So that way it doesn't come crashing down or falling all the way back, so it's holding itself up there. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get some waffle batter going here. Put some in there. I got uh, a third of a cup. I'm just going to put it right in the middle. And you don't want a whole lot of batter because you don't want it to run over the sides, but that's what this little tray here is for is to catch any excess batter if you uh, get crazy and put too much in there. So I'm putting a third and probably another little bit in there. Not much, maybe a tablespoon on top. Okay. I'm going to close that back down. Get that nice there. And then I'm going to push it back over the circle plate here, which is right above the firebox. I don't have that open. And the reason why is that the actual circle plates that I have in the Kitchen Queen is actually larger than the catch here. Most of these can actually sit over a the open hole in the stove, but um, my cover plates are a little bit too large. So, Okay, it's been about four minutes. Uh, let's go ahead and see what we have inside. Hopefully it's not uh, too crisp. I'm going to pull it back a little bit so it won't uh, bump into that. Oops. Whoa. I just greased it. Uh, Forehand, and it is, as you can see, <laughs> spongy soft, not too crisp, but not too underdone either. It's actually uh, the way uh, my wife and I like it. It's not doughy at all, it's just kind of spongy. I like a angel food cake a little bit. Let's go ahead and put that on there. Alright, and that's my waffle. So as you can see, it just fell out. Um, the reason why is I've been using uh, olive oil. And uh, what I did is I go ahead and put the olive oil in. Just kind of put it, put it around. And then I you know, use uh, a brush to grease it in real good. And then I flip it. And then I let it sit for a little bit so it can drain into the, the bottom pan and then I Basically, put a little, uh, use the brush a little bit more, and then I put a little bit of oil if I need to. And that is how to make a waffle with a cast iron uh, waffle maker. It's not too hard at all. And what I'll do is when I put the next batch in, I'll lower this because this is the cool side, and then I'll flip it again because you want the hot side on top. So this will heat it up so it cook cook more evenly. Um, cleaning this thing was kind of a pain. Uh, the first time we got it, it was pretty much a mess. And so what I did is I put oil on it and I threw it into the oven down below for a couple hours and seasoned it real good. And then uh, today, I kind of heated it up real good. I took the plates out, separated them, I hit, put it on back sides on both sides onto the wood cook stove, heated up the wood cook stove, got it to kind of melt down a little bit, all the excess, and then I went over and just kind of poured it off in the sink, got it all off. And then I just scrubbed it real good. And then I put the olive oil back in, let it kind of season up again, and then I put my first waffle in.